You're listening to the Hunt Suburbia Podcast. I'm your host, Pat Guyette. Big bucks I've been dreaming often. Every night till I'm in a coffin. Vermont woods to the burbs of Boston. I'm looking for a tree to get lost in. Chris Warner's little dust in the snow. Quality time, just me and my bow. Fall evenings, I know just where to go for some quality times for me and my bow. It's just me and my bow. All right, this week I sit down and interview a really great bow hunter, a really tremendous archer. Uh, he was number nine in the U.S. in competitive archery. Brian Visco. Now he has killed some amazing bucks with a bow to the point where he gets to, you know, he's passing 140 inch, 150 inch Eastern deer. Um, and he got to the unfortunate scenario where he found himself bow hunting and passing on these big deer and then just going, I don't think I like this anymore and contemplated giving it up and thought about giving it up. And it took a bunch of his close buddies to, um, you know, really rally around him, keep him motivated, get him back into bow hunting, um, including one of his buddies, Sean Gerard, and you'll hear about all the other ones in the podcast. But uh, really interesting podcast, great conversation. Uh, he wants to portray to everybody, you know, how you can go about your bow hunting journey and not get burned out by it. Don't ever get into that spot where you feel like you got to give it up. So I'm really proud to announce. Uh, Brian Visco in this podcast, and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, another episode of Hunt Suburbia in my garage again. I've <laughs> still, uh, <laughs> still got the makeshift studio here, um, but uh, it works. And I got Brian Visco here. Um, thanks for coming, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, no, you, you're Honor. another one that's, you know, people have been requesting. Get Brian on. He kills some big deer. <laughs> that's, <laughs> and he knows about bow strings. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta be honest. Um, when you asked me, I was like, I don't know, humbled is the word, but like, uh, I don't consider myself certainly any authority compared to, you know, some of the guys that <clears throat> are, are in the local area. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Well, we want to have, uh, and I think you're being humble there, but we want to have, um, hunters from all skills, skill levels. Anyway, we've had newbies yeah. on here. And, sure. Um, you know, so-called pro hunters and and whatnot. Yeah. But hey, I've seen some of your, some of the pictures of deer that you've killed, and you've killed some good ones. I, um, I've been very fortunate. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, so so this this podcast, we're, Brian wants to tell his story, um, and uh, we're going to get into you know kind of the evolution of a bow hunter and uh, the bow hunting journey. Yeah. Um, everybody's on a different journey. Always. You know, I've I've been hunting since i was 10 years old in vermont so 23 years only the last four or so with a bow uh-huh. um and i'm on a different you know i'm on a journey this last year i took a, a big leap and i killed the two biggest bucks that i've ever killed and i'm extremely happy about that but next year i'm going to uh hopefully pass on uh those deer you know deer of that caliber we'll yeah. see i want to hear what you're what you're, what yeah, you're gonna say about you know, the journey i i you know, it's funny. I, nobody in my family ever hunted. Um, I was basically self-taught, um, but got into it at a time where some of my friends were also wanting to do it. Um, and uh, my parents really didn't want me to hunt either. Um, but I, I, <laughs> uh, I would, instead of cutting school to... Um, go screw off, I was cutting school to go scouting. Um, in fact, I was scouting right behind my school in Lexington, Lexington Minuteman. I would go out and um, go looking for sheds and scrapes and rubs and, uh, yeah. Like during gym class? Yeah. People yeah. thought I, I had issues because all I wanted to do was be in the woods. Um, so I really had nobody to teach me. Um, but, uh, um, geez, I mean, I've been hunting now see him 50 30 i say 32 years 33 years something like that um and i'd say 90 percent of it's all been bow hunting 
I mean, I have not done a lot of gun hunting. I've only hunted with a rifle one time. Um, and it's, that was, it's just because most of the hunting you do is in mass and the access is better? Or? Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, shotgun, muzzle loader. Uh, my only rifle hunt was Saskatchewan um, with some friends. Um, but I just uh, liked the bow hunting more. Um, archery, for me, started out started out as for hunting and evolved into 90% of it was for target archery and I was going to try to make it as a, well, maybe a partial career and then back into hunting. Um, but it's all, it's the way I wanted to do it, you know, um, closer to the game. Um, I, I think it makes you a better hunter. Yeah, uh, yep. Being a bow hunter because you have to. Definitely. You know, you can't reach out and touch them at 100 yards, or at least in my opinion, you shouldn't. <laughs> um, you know, not around here anyway. Um, so, it's, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to bow hunt. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so you started out bow hunting, and then and then for a while you, what, what made you want to get into um, pro shooting? And uh, It was 3D, really. I mean, 3D is where it all started for me. Um, you know, just local... Uh, you know, and back then, before you were probably even born, we shot at two-dimensional targets. They they were airbrushed. It was awful. Mm-hmm. You know, and then Mackenzie and Reinhardt mm-hmm. came out, and I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. You know, I want to go to the IBO Worlds. I want to see, you know, how am I compared to everyone else, you know, uh, in the country, in my class. And I get into that, and I traveled almost a straight 10 years doing ASA with a few handful of buddies of mine. Um, a couple of them, a few of them are still actually doing it locally. Um, but nationally, um, you know, we have some guys that are some of the best in the world. Dave Cousins from Maine, Eric Griggs, he owns gas bowstrings. He's still a great archer. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch I could go on and on, but it was, it was 3d shooting. I wanted to try and make, you know, residual income aside from my carpentry business and maybe make it, you know, something permanent. Um, that how do you make how do you make income um, well, doing that? Is it just the prize money? Yeah, if you the place pro- and yeah, the prize yeah. money, and then eventually, if you get to a level that <clears throat> um, sponsors will start picking up a little bit of your tab, um, you know, you're not going to make it solely on uh, their money. You're going to have to perform well. Um, it's doing decent enough where um, it, the possibilities were there, um, but it, you know, there's a, it definitely put a strain on my marriage at the time, um, uh, and after I get divorced, strain on relationships at the time, which I gave it all up just to shoot. I mean, that's all I wanted to do: work. Um, I, there were days I wouldn't even go to work. I would shoot targets all day, and then come hunting season. So it was an addiction. Uh, yeah, it was really bad. I mean, I had at one point over 120 3D targets in my girlfriend's backyard. <laughs> she had a big piece of woods behind her house, and yeah. I would shoot. You had the best 3D archery course in the state. I would set up the nastiest, hardest courses for myself and just keep changing them. You know, And my yardage, um, there's, there's probably a few guys will... To this day, give me a hard time because I still judge very well. And they're always on me to get back into it, to get back and now shoot the senior class. And it's the running joke. <laughs> um, but I really was working on it. You know, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so you hear like kid all the time that kids, you know, um, oh, he picked up a basketball, shot 500 times a day, and his yeah. dream was to make the NBA. Yeah. This is really what you were doing. Yeah, and it uh, and later in the conversation, I'll explain how it changed too uh, to a different type of archery. But as far as hunting goes, um, I at that right around that time, I just really wanted to shoot as many deer as I could. I was ju- I just wanted to shoot every single legal deer I could. I I, I shot. I mean, I took them. Uh, I wanted the experience of. I think it was the tracking more that I wanted to do. That's why I kept shooting them. <laughs> You know, it's like, I love the blood trail. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Most of them would drop in sight, but, you know. Yeah. I wanted to, it was exciting for me. 
It's an adventure every time. It really is. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line there, um, when the Drury's came out and got really um, notarized, Mark Drury, he's one of my favorites, Bob Folkrod, um, you know, a couple of these professional hunters or whatever you want to call them, um, I was like, I got to go hunt the Midwest. I have to see what it's like. And around that time, I was running something in the semi-pro class in my tournament archery that introduced me to a bunch of guys from the Midwest. And uh, a good friend of mine, Greg Pyle, lived in Indiana. And he said, man, you need to come out and hunt Illinois with me. You'll love it. And um, I think it was at that point where I saw so many 160-plus whitetails I was like, man, that's really what I want to do, mm -hmm. you know. And I hadn't yet at home seen many of, you know, Pope and Young status or decent bucks at home yet because I was shooting everything. You yeah. Know? Again, this is my theory of why. And but um, that first nice eight pointer comes by and I shoot him in Illinois. No, in in Mass. Okay. And I was like, you know, if I could just not have shot him and give him a few more years and and just shoot does here and go out to Illinois and try and um, mm -hmm. feed my appetite for the bigger deer there. This piece of private property here that I got, maybe, you know, maybe I can grow a few. And everybody's, you're crazy. They're going to they'll cross the road. Does will bring them everywhere. You can't do it here. You can't, you can't, you can't. How big was that property, the private? That that particular piece was only 44 acres, but it butt up to, uh, I think it was 110 acres of conservation land. That you can't hunt? That you can't hunt. Yep. So similar to like the piece that I have now, um, I felt like they were protected. If they didn't make it to the roads or if they didn't slip onto other properties, you know, I had a better chance that they might grow. Either way, if you're not killing them then they have a better yeah. chance right right in that itself right, right? And, and i'll use that one all the time um there's a hundred percent chance a deer you shoot will never grow another inch mm -hmm. but there's a better chance that they can if you let them walk that's not for everybody it wasn't for me at one time but shooting smaller bucks just it just didn't do it for me anymore you know and uh i met once we opened Teepee, we opened the shop, and I started meeting more people. Um, I come to meet Dan Wolf, who you had a podcast with recently. Yep. And um, he turned me on to a piece of property in Dover that, you know, by rights where we were supposed to be shooting everything. <laughs> and I wouldn't. And it used to drive him crazy. <laughs> oh, so you're the one that he referenced in the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, myself, there were a few others, The too. landowner would be like, I, yeah. I, I saw that yeah. there were deer under his stand. It wasn't that, but she, the woman that owned the property, was still noticing a lot of does destroying a yard. And, mm -hmm. you know, I was like 300 yards from her house. It was one of the bigger properties. And um, I killed a really nice buck in on her property. Um, I, I put a lot of time into that animal. In fact, a few of the guys in uh, Boston Bowhunter and Northeast had pictures of them making long, long distance. Uh, he had a big area that he that he lived in, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get him. And that kind of what year was that? I want to say that was 2012. Um, Do you know what he scored? One, uh, I, I really should know that. Uh, 163 and an eighth. Was it that one or no? No. Because I, I saw that on no, your Facebook. That, it's that, a big that one. was the one, 2015. Is that Massachusetts? Yeah. Um, wow. See, I, that looks like I want. I want to say it netted just over 160. Beauty. Um, um, but irregardless of that, that particular deer right there just got me into... You know, I have to find more private pieces on my own um, because I'm not I'm not just I'm not going to be happy with anything, you know, um, just breaking into the book. I want some nice some nice deer. And you know what? To, truth be told, I did shoot a few others that I wish I didn't now since then. 
um, um, and friends would give me hell for saying that, but you know, they just, it just caught me in the heat of the moment that I snapped <laughs> and shot them, you know, but, uh, um, well, that, that decision to, to shoot a deer is like, it happens in the moment. You can say, yeah. you can go out with a plan and say, you're, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And, uh, I'd like to see this one grow. And then something can happen that makes it a better story. And it's like, you know what? I have to, at this point, yeah. this is a, this will be a great story. I can continue to tell. And that's what happened with me with, with that six pointer yeah. that I tagged out on. It was a mature six. And, um, I had that kind of like split second. It's like, all right, I'm going to, I am going to take him yeah. out because it was, yeah. it was cool. We had a seven minute standoff and I had to reload an arrow and I was yeah. on the ground on a knee and oh, on the ground too. It was so, you know, those things can, your game plan can change, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like a week to the day that I shot that deer, um, I was hunting in a small little piece um, with um, my buddy Kevin, and um, excuse me, um, we had this little buck in between us. It's a very small piece, so we're only about eighty yards apart, and he hadn't shot any deer yet that year. And I said, you know what? I'll get him up, and I bust out the buck roar and really laid into it, and he jumps up and. He almost gets a shot at him, and he beds back down, and I kept going. I said, all right, I'm going to rattle, hit the buck roar, snort wheeze. I'm going to give him everything. (laughs) We'll get him going. And when I I hit the horns the second time, I heard something on my left, and here comes this. It ended up 198 pounds. He was only a small eight-pointer rack-wise, but he was never going to – he was a mature deer. That's a big deer for Massachusetts His His – he laid his ears back and walked right into me. He wanted to just whoop whoever, whoever it was, he wanted them. And, yeah, I mean, that decision right there was um, he's mature. I'm going to take him, and I shot him. Um, and it was like right then, it's like, you know, oh, I shouldn't have shot him. Mm. Like, and, and then I got to him, and he's a giant. You know, mm-hmm. he's just a mature deer. And I think it was somewhere in – Somewhere in there, it started turning where it was like, man, this just isn't as fun as it was before. It's not, it's just not the same. It's getting to where, you know, why am I being so choosy about things? You know, this is supposed to be fun. Next year, I'm going to stack them up like cordwood. I'm going to fill every doe tag I have, and next year is going to be different. And the next few years come along, and I'm not even shooting I mean, I, I had a few days I had 10, 12 does under me, little bucks. I get video of 130-inch buck and this one, and I'm not even grabbing for the bow. I'm taking time off of work. I'm this not, is the year that you were supposed to was, be shooting everything. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it led up to um, when I, uh, 2015, <clears throat> I hadn't shot anything in a few years. And I well, get, why do you think you said I'm going to shoot everything and then I I, I just was like you know what enough of and, this and then you didn't though. yeah I it just it, like you said you switch back and forth and I found I got some pictures of this buck that and uh, f- very few have seen the pictures I have of him uh, soda pop he's the famous ghost that everybody thinks I you know fabricate but I have pictures <laughs> that friends have seen and select few have seen and. Um, I was like, I'm going to pull all my effort into him. And I got excited about it again. You know, I'm going to hunt this deer. This is the one I'm going to hunt. And I put so much time into him. And uh, my buddy Jason Van Hillo messaged me. And how's it going? I said, I don't know, but I should be fishing today. <laughs> it was like 60 degrees. And I'm like, this is, I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. Like, I've put so much time into him. And I'm just never going to kill him. The next one that comes by gets it and doesn't have nice eight point come by and I shoot him out of frustration and I'm like I just back and forth but you what didn't, am you I didn't doing? feel good about it I didn't I got to him and I was like oh, he's beautiful but what was that your I second doing? tag or that no this was uh 2015 so, so jump ahead but this, that was your first tag first tag. you still had a chance to go after silver right, pop right yep. so I'm like okay that's it I'm not I'm just not gonna you know, uh, now my hand is forced. I have to do, you know, the right thing. And um, I got two encounters with him um, the following week. Um, 
uh, 30 or 40 seconds each. Uh, didn't bump them, didn't spook them, just it just never happened. And um, he left me one afternoon into the swamp, and I was like, I'm going to get in my stand two hours early tomorrow. The wind's right. I'm going to tear the woods down before I get in my tree. I'm going to rattle, destroy a tree, you know, the whole paint the picture. And right at first light, I rattled again, and I hear this grunt, and here he comes. And I'm like, oh, here he, here he comes. He's coming. He's coming into my scrape. He, he's coming. I got him. And I look over, and I was so mad it wasn't him. I'm like, I'm ending my season right now. I'm going to kill him. And I'm just so frustrated. Oh, that's interesting. And I'm just so mm. mad. I, I'm just, I cannot kill this, this deer. And the problem was is I couldn't go any further on the property. Mm -hmm. he's into such a big piece of conservation i really can't i have to wait for him to come to me totally and this buck walks in and i smoke him at 26 yards and he runs off and i can remember calling brandon ashford saying oh i just really screwed up he's like did you wound one i just shot like 130 inch no, i got a great I, buck for most people but i, I did it again mm -hmm. just like yeah last week I did it again. I let it get the better of me. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. You sound a little bit like a serial killer, right? right. You watch these documents. Yeah. like, I couldn't control myself. I did it. and I... Yeah. And, and I get down because I heard him crash. And I get down and I start trailing him. And I have video, actually, still of the, of the recovery as it happened. Mm. And um, whenever I walked up to that deer, I was like, whoa. Like he's way bigger than I, than I thought, and um, I was like, "That's I, I have pictures of this one. This one is one we called Wacky Rack." I'm like, "Man, wow! Did he blow up in a year? You know, because we had him. He was like, actually, it was two years. Was the last picture it was like maybe 130 inch, and that one scored just over 160. Um, I killed him the day after Kevin Tremell killed that freak." Uh, that five main beam freak. So we were all, you know, I was all, I, I kind of was all excited about it, but again, it got the better of me. That one? Yeah. Oh, so this is, this is, this is the. His was number three non-typical with and, a bow. And that's the one that you were, you didn't like that you shot at I was, first? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come yeah, on. Yeah. I, I and, and then when I sent Brandon. And you thought he was an eight, but it looks like a 10 or 11. Yeah. I didn't know. I was like. I, yeah, he's an eleven. He's a good one. Yeah, or, and then there's yeah. some kickers too. But I was <laughs> very happy when I got up to him because he's a giant. I mean, he was really big. He was two hundred pounds on the button. It ended up being um, the number one typical mass buck with a bow that year. Yeah, that's a beautiful deer. But you know, to be fair, the number one in Northeast Big Buck Club in mass that was registered. I'm sure there were a lot more bigger bucks sure. killed that year. Um, you know, um, but still, uh, the fact I, I can't believe that uh, you can be in a tree and say, "Man, I'm so pissed." That's not the one I'm after. I mean, that, what did what did I, he score? One fifty? No, he was just over one sixty. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's a yeah. yeah he's and, a monster. And, and I, you know, it, it's like from then until now. Even last year, I shot a nice doe um, out of that same stand. Um. Had seen a few bucks, but I haven't been putting the time in the last three or four years. Uh, like, you know, I still thinking about trying to kill Soda Pop. And a um, friend of mine saw him, got pictures of him like six miles up the road. Is he still alive? I don't think he is at this point. Yeah. Um, last two Januaries in a row, we get pictures of him in this individual's backyard that feeds all year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um from the crow flies about two miles from my furthest stand I can put in the woods. And, um, you know, if it's not the rut, there's no reason for them to come through to me. Yeah. So it just got to where, you know, I was thinking, why am I even bothering? I know he's not coming through. You got to let him go. Peak rut. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And again, I was like, you know, I'm going to remember saying it to Brandon Ashford again this year. I'm going I'm to shoot a bunch of does this year. I'm going to start having more fun with it because I'm getting ready to wear. I think I'm going to stop hunting because it's not, it's just not fun for me anymore like it was before. 
this you, is you ruined. think soda pop ruined it? N- um, I I think because he kind of led to both, you know. Yeah, I think it. Um, it, you know, it's my own fault. A lot of it's my own fault for not killing him. I'm sure a bunch of guys will say you didn't put the time in you should have, and they're partially right. Somewhere in here, I got into ter- a tournament bass fishing. Okay, so before we get to that, you mentioned Dan. Dan texted me and he said, and I told him I was interviewing you today. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. He said, um, you know, tell Brian to put down the damn fishing pole and pick up his yeah. bow again. Yeah, I, I, I reunited with an old friend of mine because of the uh, because of teepee, um, and Facebook. I saw an old friend of mine that I shot with years ago, Jason Van Hillo. And he got me in a tournament bass fishing, and I got him into archery again. Uh, he was in a tournament bass fishing, and we made almost like a switch. Yeah, you guys traded. And he's still going with it pretty hard. We got his son, Jake, uh, Jake Van Hillo, into it pretty hard. Um, they put a lot of time in. Jake used to work for us. Uh, a bunch of young guys used to work for us. Brandon, Kevin, you know, a whole bunch of them. And they're all still you know going at it pretty hard and i just took to the fishing like it was easier i guess you know i loved it more the passion never goes away mm-hmm. you don't have to bundle up <laughs> you know well you do kind of you do when we when we fish late yeah you know i know a lot of guys are in their stands and i'm posting pictures of a small mouth and but it took i think it made it easier for me to say i think i'm done because this is fun to me yep. always. And hunting has gotten to the point where it, I can't have fun unless I'm onto something big. But yet I, I, I haven't been putting the time in that you really need to for that caliber of animal. So Yeah, that's really the main difference with fishing and hunting is you're not yeah. seeking out a specific yeah. fish that you've been watching for right. years, right? right. You can, and, you're actually having a relationship with this deer. Right. That deer, you had a relationship with him for a while. Yeah. And you're still thinking about, you know, the one that got away, right? Yeah. It's like... Definitely. It's a big difference. So, I, um... The thing with the fishing, too, is the tournaments got me back into... Um, geez, we kind of skipped over it, that, the whole archery thing. Uh, I, I stopped shooting 3D archery and got into Target. So, I was doing indoor. And... Vegas and all of that and that took away from the hunting a little bit too all I wanted to do was compete target archery and then it was I wanted to make the U.S. team that's all I did was shoot 50 meters I just wanted to make USAT and it took away from hunting too um and, and probably com- other things in your life too right it's definitely like, yep, yep. um but I completely stopped when I started fishing I completely stopped 3D shooting, target archery. I, I pretty much stopped everything except indoor leagues in the fall and winter. Um, and again, it's because it started getting unfun. You know, it's uh, you put all this time in, you don't get out of it what you want to, and it started getting unfun. And, um, you know, I guess the whole reason of what I wanted to convey today was don't let it get unfun to you. <laughs> yeah, but how do you, you know, I know. How do you do that? I know it. It's... I think keep it in check as to why you're out there, what you know, what you want out of it. Well, let's, uh, let's go back to the very beginning. Why did you fall in love with hunting in the first place? I don't know. As a city kid from Watertown, Mass. How do I fall in love with hunting? I mean, I just yeah. Uh, but what was it? We gotta we gotta get to that first, and then you know, I I always say the very first hunting magazine I opened is a picture of Miles Keller. Um, famous hunter with a Oneida Eagle bow at full draw on a giant whitetail. I'm like, oh, that really looks fun. I, w- I want to do that, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just loved it. I mean, I breathed yeah, How do you it, get from that to, like, going almost, out behind, almost, almost quitting. behind the school? No, first, yeah. you're even going from that and then being like, I need to pick up sheds. I got to get yeah, into everything. Yeah, I was just, uh, you know, am I that type that's, well, what is it, when you're, um, I don't know what the word is, when you're compulsive, you know, you OCD. just... Not o- I am OCD, but like when <laughs> when you do something, you have to do it to the max. Yeah, there's sounds, no. Well, the greatest you know. anything, and I like to go back. I'm, I 
I've always been a huge sports fan. I haven't watched many sports in the last few years, but you know, mm-hmm. Tiger Woods, I always love watching him. When, and when you, if you want to get to the point of Tiger, the level of, of greatness as, as Tiger Woods is, you got to be all in. You're all in mm-hmm. from, he was all in from age two. Now, a lot of that was, right. you know, his dad pushing it on him, but right. you know, that's, that's your personality and not everybody's wired that. And right. maybe 2% of the people in the world are, are wired that right. way. Right. And, and, and you know, it's, I see all these debates on on our pages on Facebook and everything else about you know guys saying you know not a giant but I'll take him and the argument of let him walk uh, let the guy decide what he wants and I've always preached you know to each his own you know whatever you want to do if it's a legal if it's a legal animal take him whatever makes you happy I mean just because I want to do what I want to do doesn't mean that it's the only way but there's plenty of golfers out there who suck at golfing. Yeah. But they love doing it every yeah. weekend because they like being out there. Yeah. They like being with the guys. Yeah. They, the you know, <laughs> get having a nice sunny day, being in the most the best landscape property yeah. you possibly can. Yeah. It's right. fun, right? Yeah. So everybody's got their own thing. Yeah. Your own reason for doing it. Um, you know, I I think some of it was probably amongst all of my peers and my friends is, you know, when I was killing a shooting a lot of deer. I mean, there were there were years I was shooting double digits, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut. Well, you must love uh, venison too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to be. There was a point where I was like, yeah, I killed like ten this year. Check me out, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, I killed twelve this year, and I, you know. Yep. Um, on top of the fun of it, it there was that part of. I don't know if that's ego, or whatever it is. I wanted mm. to be the guy that was like me. No, that he, that's that. You know. That part of your personality that you know only one two percent of the people have yeah. the Michael Jordan the Tiger Woods I'm not calling you that about no. hunting God no <laughs> but you, hey if you didn't pick up target shooting and bow I mean uh, 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 bass fishing and all this other stuff these other obsessions that you bounce to you you could you could have been you could have been yeah. you're wearing a Drury outdoors hat and, <laughs> you know you. Yeah. If you but but it takes tremendous sacrifice really to does. to do something like that and yeah. to get to that level of greatness, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, I look at the new level of guys that are taking it to the extreme, um, and I'm gonna miss a bunch, but like Lavassier, John Petrick, um, Neil. I mean, there's a, Mark Waite, Pat Burns. There's a bunch of them. Um, Eric, I mean that. Mm-hmm. It, 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 24/7, 365 with it. They're way into it more than I was. That doesn't mean that I wasn't into it as much, but they're. I mean, they take it to a whole different level. Like, I mean, they're they're already scouting. They already have cameras out. I mean, I don't know that they're not doing anything else, um, but I just um, I don't know. I, I I really don't know why it it. It was such a passion for me and how it could go away, but, you know. Um, yeah, so it does sound like you're not all the way back in yet. No, but I did have some help this fall. <laughs> <laughs> what um, do you mean? Well, I actually had, I had been <clears throat> messaging Brandon a couple of times um, saying that, you know what, I just don't have it in me anymore to get up. You know, it's a struggle to get up in the morning. I'm a morning hunter. I don't hunt the afternoons. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to take time off, um, and this year I didn't get a lot of time uh, with my job and, and whatnot, but um, I just couldn't get I just couldn't get out of bed. You know, it was like I'd go out and fish in this stuff. There's no way I'm going out hunting in it. If there was anything over like an eight mile an hour wind, nah, I'm not going. Hmm. You know, and I finally. Um, had about a hundred and eighty inch walk in on me at about twenty five yards, hmm. um, and it was an afternoon hunt. Where is it? Just what happens? <laughs> yeah. So um, I get in my stand about two o'clock. It's one eighty. Ten minutes in my stand, I see an eight pointer to my left, and he just walks off into the swamp. And then a spike comes right it, under me. This the same property. That, yeah. Like yeah, same property. And... So so it's it's an <clears throat> offspring, a sibling, whatever. I mean, that area is just so immense, and you can't hunt it. And this is that same one, that the 44 acres up against conservation? No, this is a different piece. Okay. This is um, this piece here. Um, 
he's over 100 acres, but there's I don't even know how big the piece of conservation. But the similarity is when you if you can butt up to something where there's right. hunting, you can't hunt. It's prohibited. Right. Yeah. It's a sanctuary. Yep. I mean, it gives them room to grow, and I feel comfortable letting them ride. So, anyway, this little guy he moves off, and this spiky walks right in under me and goes running off behind me, gone. And like an hour later, it sounded like the woods are falling down, and in runs three bucks together. That eight pointer that I first saw, mm-hmm. about 140 inch ten, and then this absolute giant. I mean, I just I remember it because I lo- I lost my breath. Like, <laughs> you know, I thought for a second there he is. Yeah. But it wasn't. The characteristics of well, the rack, rack were not the same. Yeah. Um, similar, like like okay, that's definitely an offspring, a sibling, whatever. And I'm like, oh, here he comes. And they stop, and the little one boogers, and they all bound, and he stops at 26 yards head on at me. Not looking at me, but I'm already at full draw. And but, the, and the head on. Head on. Uh. And the 140 is right beside him, broadside. Mm-hmm. I swing my bow over, put the pin on his chest, and my I just with my right eye, I'm looking over at the bigger one, and I'm like, no, I'm going to. Now we're gonna in wait. the game. Now we're in the game. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay. That's intense. I was like, you know, this is. Here we go again. This is awesome. No, they, they weren't looking up at you or anything, no, right? No. And they, um, you know, that all just um, ended with no ability to do anything. And um, but it really fired me up. I'm like, okay, now I'm now I'm back. Now I'm kind of it's back. Like the Rocky story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm like, all right. I'm Tiger after his lull. He's like, I got to get back in and change my swing. Yeah. And, I'm yeah. like, I, I've got a couple of real. Like, if that 140 comes back in, I'll shoot him. Like, if that scenario happens, because he's beautiful. I mean, it, like, I can't wait to see him next year now. Yeah. Thinking about him. But, Here we uh, go. So, I don't know, it was maybe um, two weeks later, I got out in an afternoon sit um, and had the deer I killed this year. Um, he just made just made book, uh, but um, um, what's his name? Uh, one of my buddies, we, we've been going back and forth, and he's like, you know, I... Dude, I think you need to just put one on the ground. You haven't shot a decent buck in a while. It's like just, you know, if a nice one comes in, he goes, just just shoot him in, man, and have some fun with it. You know what you I know, mean? The great thing about Massachusetts is the two bucks, and yeah. you, can, you can get two good yeah, ones. right. So yeah. I'm like, all right, well, all right, you know what? He's right. I just need to get the monkey off my back and shoot something that, that I'd be, you know, I think I would be happy with. And not two days later. I smoke him. I smoke this nice buck. He comes in at about 16 yards. Um, shoot him. He runs 50 yards, falls over. Walk up to him and say, wow, you know, that's, that's not a bad one. He's not a giant, <laughs> but I'm happy. Like, I'm actually, I'm not disappointing myself. I'm happy with it. I'm like, hey, there we go. You know, not I'm back, but it's like, uh, I'm into this again. You know, this is pretty cool. And it's like, uh, I don't have any cell can, but now I'm like, I have to get him. I have to have him. I got to put time in. Why do you think that at that moment? Uh, for this bigger buck, I'm thinking I have to do scouting when I'm not a, when I'm not around. I need those cameras to help me so I don't have to keep intruding. I don't want to go in there. Like this year, I didn't hunt that piece until the second week in November. <clears throat> I just would not go in there hoping and look what happened the first day I sit it. So, um and friends would call me stupid for doing that because they, you know, they disagree with the way I think. For doing what? Not getting in there? I don't want to hunt them in October. <clears throat> yeah. Every time you step foot in the woods, you're giving them the opportunity to get you when you're not there. Like, you, yeah. leave, you leave at 5 o'clock, they come by at 5.30 and get one whiff of you, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That could be it. Well, that's these big old right. 180, right. you know, massive bucks, right? Exactly. Yeah. But you can, you, you know, a 140, uh, somewhat, a sure. buck that's a couple of years younger. Sure, right. Yeah. And even the bigger ones, they make mistakes, and it's like, mm-hmm. um, you know, nothing's foolproof. I mean, especially when the ladies are running around, they don't care about anything. Yeah. But I wanted to wait for that time instead of, you know, I like to, if I'm going to sit, I always say it. I'm only going to go if my odds are in my favor. I'm not going to, especially with being the way I've been, with not wanting to really go, I'm only going to go if, if my percentage is through the roof. Like, why even bother if I'm, I'm just going to make it worse? I'm going to go when it's the best time. 
and it worked out. So, so on that note, though, um, you, you know, a few minutes ago you said you don't hunt afternoons, you just hunt mornings. And then I know it. What happened? Why, why'd you go in this afternoon? I just happen to have. And the is time that off. is that literally the one time in gears that you went in the afternoon? No, or I you'll, mean, I, you'll hunt them here I, and there. I will. It's just like my work schedule is so crazy. Um, I work kind of full time with a, a carpenter buddy of mine, and I'm still doing strings. I still own my string business is doing very good. Viscosity. Uh, viscosity, yeah, yep. I'm still going. Uh, I've been making strings 35 years. Now, viscosity means something, right? It's an actual word, isn't it? Do you like want... in, in my head, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm remembering it as an actual word in our vocabulary. It's just a... But it is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the way... And your do last wanna... name is Visco, so it's, per... yeah. it's a double on. Now, do you want to know how yeah. the name really came about? Yeah, I There's do. a lot of people that don't know it. I do. <laughs> Because you mentioned Pat Pat Burns, you know him and I uh, both rapped in our in previous lives. We were yeah. rappers, you know. Oh yeah. And a lot of wordplay goes on. Sure. Viscosity is a double entendre. Yeah. It's your name. Yeah. Plus, it also means yeah. something else. Now, you, now yeah. what, what is it? Uh, How did it come about? It came about is uh, Eric Griggs, who owns Gas Bow Strings. I'm not afraid to to pump up Eric. He's yeah. he's a good kid, good guy. He's he's very uh, doing very well. I'm proud of him. Um, him and I both worked at Reedy's Archery for like three years. Oh, good. We lived together. Heard great things about that show. Chris, Chris, a great guy. Great guy. We both worked for him. And one of uh, Chris's first managers, Alan Cunningham, used to always say, I, you know, I get pretty heated when I didn't shoot well. And he would always say, hey, no viscosity breakdowns. You know, mm. let's not have any of that. And Eric... Uh, had gas bowstrings years ago, years and years ago. When he was really shooting heavy, I would work for him at night after carpentry, save money for bear hunting. He was out traveling shooting. Well, he moves and sells his stuff to uh, a friend of ours, Nathan Brooks. And fast forward a few years later, he moves back and starts gas again. And then he moves again, and I buy all his equipment from him. And he's like, you know, you ought, to, you ought to start your own string business selling public instead of just doing it for friends and everything else. I'm like, yeah, you know, I really should. And we were just sitting around. He's like, you know, we don't want any viscosity breakdowns. <laughs> and I'm like, dude. He remembered. I'm like, that's it. That's the, yeah. Well, and dude, just, your last name's Visco. Yeah. <laughs> and it just stuck. And, and I was like, ah, oh, he nailed it. You know, it was, so I got to give him credit, him and Alan. And uh, that's, yeah, it's just where it, uh. It happened. So. Viscosity, the state of being thick, sticky, and semi-fluid in consistency <laughs> due to internal friction. Yeah. <laughs> what, I don't know. It's crazy. But, yeah. um, so what goes yeah. in? I don't want um, – we're going to do this a lot, actually. We'll, we'll save it for the next podcast. Sure. We're going to do one sure. nerding out on bows. I was going to yeah. ask about what goes oh, into yeah. building a string. Yeah. But, it's not rocket um, science, but – Let's let's get back to the, so, the hunting. Um, so I did kill that nice deer this year. Yeah. Um, and the 180, is he still alive? Oh, yeah. You so, all right, yeah, perfect. He, he's so, still alive. So now you are back into it, right? You, you've got to like. I am. And I'm, I'm like, okay, I need some cell cams. I need to get uh, either John or Jim out there with me or a few friends, my buddy Murray or Jason or Brandon or Someone that whatever. you trust. Do that some. Knows oh, that they would property. never. They yeah. would never. But mm-hmm. just go out there with me, do some shed hunting. Um are you the only one that hunts this property? And you can't get in there. Now, that's funny you would ask that. There's two gentlemen that have hunted the Abutters property for years. Um, Chris and um, Eric, a couple guys from Drake at Nice Guys. They, um, they hunted the Abutters property for years, and that gentleman died. And the gentleman that owns the property I have bought it. Mm. And they wow, got that's a per- great scenario. They got permission last year again uh, to and, come to come back. And now one, there's one owner, and I'm like, um, he's like, okay, contact them and talk to them and work it out and everything else. I'm like, oh god, here we go. I'm like, this is not what I wanted. <laughs> and I got to talk to them this year, and we've worked out a great agreement. They're great guys. And, they're gonna uh, stay on that original piece. Well, they're in, yeah, they're in their little section, and I have yeah. my little section, and that's just the way our landowner has, has let it roll. Yep. I mean, that buck could, it's he could stroll over there, no problem. 
they've got so many other spots they barely hunt you know where i am um and they hunt the midwest too um but i want to but think about it there yeah. are some deer here as good as oh, the midwest God, yeah oh yeah this 180 that you're I mean, oh, yeah. uh, somebody yeah. somebody killed a mid 180 in chelmsford this year yeah that's like three miles from my house yeah i mean they, they're around they really are all over the place they are i mean it's um and you know it's funny you'll you'll hear people say well they're used to humans and they're used to the human odor stop paying so much attention to it and everything else and it's like you know they may be right once in a while it might work out and everything else i'm not built that way i can't just i'm just gonna keep going and eventually it'll work out i can't hunt that way i just cannot do it i'm, I'm not um yeah right now that's just, so talking about two different journeys that's where i am yeah like i'm you know just keep and, pounding it and you'll get one yeah, I'm, right. and and I'm happy with the, every deer that I that I shoot at the moment, and you it's should, like you should, you know, that that's that's where I am in my journey. Sure. And I this last year I hunted the same piece over and over and over because I kept going in there, and the cameras kept showing the same bucks, and then sometimes bigger bucks coming in, yeah. and I was you know hunting that piece ten or twelve times, yeah, um, you know, and then I'd still but I'd still see. Were you seeing them on stand too? Yep. Yeah. I was seeing a lot of action. I was seeing them pushing does through and chasing, and they kept getting bigger. The ones I was seeing on stand as well. And were you getting busted any of these times, or were you just, never? No, yeah, I never yeah, got busted. So, so see, you were doing. You may have been, but I was leaving scent everywhere, which, you know, I, I'm. I just don't. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's different hard. though, you know. Yeah, it, it every is. piece is different. It and, is. It's true. And I didn't end up getting my target. He was like a one fifties, one sixty nine pointer. He's just he's the biggest thing I'd have ever seen. Yeah. Um, he came in on me one day, uh, snuck in with a tiny doe, <laughs> but the doe was she, like I, I'm facing this way. I turned around. I heard the crunch and I turned around and and looked and the doe was staring right, right up, up at, at, at the stand. Mm. I don't know what it was. She didn't. I don't think she saw me moving. I think my bow it was a little windy. I think my bow was swinging on the arm a little bit. Mm, yeah. And it and it tipped her off and I never got a shot off. But yeah, it's a, it's amazing what they will allow sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's like I, I can't believe I just got away with that. Um, you know, and other times you just blink and they're gone. You know. Yeah. So, um, all right, but, let's take a, just a quick break because uh, sure. the battery's getting low on this. Okay. I, I want to <laughs> change it so I don't lose all this conversation, sure. and we'll come right back. Okay. All right, quick announcement. Heron Hill Winery is back. They really appreciated what we did for them uh, last year, um, the first four months of the podcast. I appreciate what they did for us, which was give us a little bit of money to – um, pay for the equipment that we use for this podcast. And if you enjoy this podcast, you want to see it keep going, what we need to see is uh, y'all supporting the sponsor. So support Heron Hill Winery. If you're buying wine, don't go down to the store. You can do it on heronhill.com. Order whatever you want. They get a wide array of wines, and uh, it's free shipping for anything that's six bottles or more. So you really can't beat that. And if you're a first-time buyer... Use code HS5 for Hunt Suburbia 5, and you'll get an additional 5% on the first buy. Um, After that, it's going to revert back to just what their volume discounts are. But every time you order, we're going to get credit for it. And um, that's going to help us keep a long-term sponsor happy, keep producing amazing content for you guys week after week. Um, We're going to get better video equipment eventually. We're going to expand what we're doing for content. So it's not just the podcast, but if you love the podcast and you love wines or your wives or your girlfriends love wines, um, somebody around you does, you know, get it for a great gift. Use code HS5 at checkout if you're, you're a first time buyer. If you're repeating as a buyer, just go on there and order up, and uh, we're going to get credit for it. And I really appreciate you guys supporting the sponsors. They appreciate it, and uh, thanks a lot. All right, just want to take a quick break and remind everybody that's listening, um, please, if you haven't, go on to iTunes or the podcast app, uh, anywhere that you can leave a review on the podcast, iTunes and the uh, the Apple Podcast app are the best uh, places to do so because it really helps in the rankings. Go in there, leave a written review, uh, tap on the five-star rating. It's going to help us a lot in uh, shooting up the rankings and getting this podcast out to more people, and I would really greatly appreciate that. 
Uh, go and subscribe on our YouTube page if you haven't yet. It's Hunt Suburbia, youtube.com forward slash Hunt Suburbia. Of course, follow us on all of our social medias. Continue to interact with us. And if you have any questions or anything you want to send me, uh, shoot me an email at uh, huntsuburbia at gmail.com. Really appreciate you guys. All right, we're back after the break. Um, let's talk about, so uh, Pat Burns, who you mentioned, he, he's been over here. Uh, done a podcast and Mm -hmm. he also had like this long story with his with a buck and Mm -hmm. he's still in that story right and he's going after him year after year after year it's been five years with this buck and he's just ready to and so he he ages him at like 11 or 12 and he he keeps telling me he's like you know it's it's at the point because you mentioned you get over obsessed with a deer and um and obviously right now you're still thinking about pop right you're still thinking about that buck yeah. And he's just like, I, I kind of just want him to drop his sheds so I can't hunt him anymore this year. Right. And I want to go in and grab the sheds because yeah. that'll end the story for this year. Right. Because he's, he, he's hung up on it, right? Right. So that can be, you know, the, I can see how you can get so obsessed over one single deer that that can happen. You know, how do you, like, how do you avoid that? I, I, I... How do you recover from the I mean, whole pop thing? Is it this this new buck that you're on that's 180? And, for me, yeah, um, yeah, that's the only thing that's going to do it. Um, I think this particular deer now has gotten me sucked back in pretty heavy. Like I am going to put time in like I used to this year. Um, but I'd say the only other way you can can um, if you still have another season left, like. If, if you can't do it here, go to the Midwest, go somewhere else, and, and get your fix. You know what I mean? <laughs> it may, maybe makes it easier for you. Yeah, but there's something about if you can get a deer of that caliber I know here. It. I know it. It's unbelievable. Then it's way more incredible to yeah, get a deer of that caliber out there. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's, um, you know, I'll, I'll have buddies say that, man, they're dropping like flies. You should see how many big bucks are hitting the dirt. And it's like, listen, they're over a couple thousand guys on these couple of pages local when you see three or four good bucks hit the dirt you got to realize that's out of probably let, let's say your average hunter and then your real hardcore guy mm-hmm. out of maybe i don't know 20 percent real hardcore guys if you only see one or two big ones hit the dirt now really how many big ones have really you know um so they're definitely here, but um, yeah, it's 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 a hell of an accomplishment to be able to do it. Um, I think some guys are gonna luck into it. I mean, that happens, you know. I mean, guys will go out and uh, ten minutes left of daylight, and you know, it can happen. It's like, yeah, it can, it can. And uh, guys that are first time yeah. hunters, yeah, I saw yeah. some some guy in Mass this year that was yeah. his first year. He, he, had, <laughs> he had two corkers, yeah, you know, on, yeah. in the same sit. <laughs> he's ruined for life well yeah that, that's know? where I, I didn't know where you're gonna go with it when we yeah, first started talking that, like, kinda, I wanna, yeah i want to talk about like how you cannot ruin it for yourself and uh, i thought you yeah. were gonna say something like that where yeah. you know you started going midwest and you shot some bu- did you shoot some bucks out in midwest I, you know what i you never did i, I didn't and and the, did you get one in saskatchewan uh i did not uh, well, see that's, I, that's shot good. a huge i shot a 198 pound doe in saskatchewan <laughs> oh, holy crap uh, nobody the week we went, we went late December. Uh, it was a cheap hunt. Yeah. Um, we froze. I mean, we were in, you know, minus 30, yeah. minus 25 for a week. Jeez. Um, um, and I saw, you know, 130s, 140s, saw a lot of them. And that's right when I was starting to get into, no, I'm not going all the way up there to kill what I might be able to kill at home. I yeah. mean, I want to kill one of these ones you see. These big dark yeah, horns, big yeah. chocolate rack, you know, and um, but to go back to what you know, how do you not, um, you know, how do you you keep the love for it? I guess like um, I don't know. Um, you got to find it for me. Finding another buck to play with now has kind of got me back in. I guess. Yeah. So you're are, are you you're totally past the point where you're, you'll shoot a one thirty eight pointer or. Um, no, I mean, look at the one I just killed is just barely going to make Pope. Yeah. I mean, and I'm happy with it. Yeah. You know, I'm happy Good. with it. I don't think I'll do it again for a while anyway. But I now mean, you're but, also in like a very unique scenario where you've got 
this great property that I abuts do. conservation I, I, land, I, I right? Actually, yeah, and you know, I I see. So you all know the, they grow big. I do. I see all the fighting going on with, you know, guys walking in on each other and, and stepping on each other and stands getting stolen and cameras and everything else. I hate that for them. I really do. I mean, I I can't hunt public ground. I can't do it. Um, it would drive me crazy. Um, I probably would have quit totally by now if I did because I don't want to deal with that. I want to do my own thing, and if I'm not successful, it's because I didn't do something right or the deer have shifted, not because somebody else is in the area or whatnot and i don't want to mess them up either like uh you know you think you got all your all your um ducks in a row for an area you're ready to go and then somebody can walk in the day before and completely ruin all your plans yeah i just can't i can't have it so i'm very fortunate with what my scenario is not everybody can do that i realize that i'm very lucky um, but I worked it. It took me seven years to get that piece. Well, I was so, going to say everybody, you know, hard. everybody can. You, you ha- everybody has the same opportunity to approach it, landowners yeah. and get it. But yeah. not everybody. Again, just that one to two percent personality that's going to keep yeah. going. So yeah. let's talk about how you got that. I that piece. How, how are you able to secure this amazing I, piece? I got that from when we had TP. We had a Junior Olympic program kids. Um, just tell everybody what TP is. Cause T- TP Archer was my yep. pro shop that I bought from a, a previous owner. Um, we had it for like 13 years. Okay. Um, but we had a junior Olympic program, uh, kids. And one of the kids there, their grandparents were in watching one day, and they heard that I was a hunter, and they had a lot of trouble with deer. And they said, why don't you come on over? We have a piece of wild art. And uh, they're destroying everything. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And got that little piece, and I kept getting pictures of this guy walking through my area. And I asked them, who is this individual that, like, just keeps on, you know, he's kind of screwing things up for me. He said, well, that's the abutting landowner. Well, unbeknownst to me, uh, this is the gentleman that now I have permission from. um, And uh, I kept on him for, like, three years. I just kept asking and asking and promoting myself um, at that time when I first started asking him. Um, I had a national rank of, I was ninth for USAT in the country. I mean, I was pushing everything. Everything yeah. I could tell him how great I was. And, you know, um, I'm a conservationist and I'll police your property. I tried everything with him and couldn't break him. Is he like a farmer? Or no. no, no, just a very wealthy man, a nice guy. Um, didn't really understand hunting. And then, um, I was, geez, where was I? Um, I don't know if I was, I think I was at a tournament somewhere and he messaged me, he emailed me and said, we're going to allow you to hunt this year. And this is the outline piece of property that we're going to let you hunt. You stay here. We want to know when you're going to be on the property, off the property, and we'd like to meet you. So I went and I met him and explain to them you know get rid of the stigma of what hunters are like and educated him and secured that property and three weeks later i killed that 160 plus awesome he was in there i knew he was in there and i i had a few pictures of him and that's the one that that i said i went after and when he come by i was pissed it wasn't pop yeah that was yeah that was that deer but i had pictures um you know, pictures of them. It just, so you've it only just had this out. property for five years or so? God, it's like, I always say three, but it's it's been, uh, that's three. Could be, yeah. Probably like yeah. four or five now, yeah. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, last year he was kind of like when he gave those other guys permission, I, I kind of felt like I wasn't killing anything and he was getting not upset, but like. Because did know, he actually you know, want you to get in there and reduce the herd or? No, but there was a town program that came in that <clears throat> there was a piece of property that butted to his, that they allowed guys to come in and there were eight individuals on the other side of the property that were hunting. Mm. And he became interested in the town program and they started educating about Lyme disease and ticks and car accidents and all that and he's like you know we need to start taking some and i shot a big doe you know and i was like you know i better start probably killing some does yeah yeah. (laughs) now look at this year 
I had one day where I had 37 come by one morning. Yeah, I mean, Dose, that's, a, that's a problem. Especially button if, bucks, if they're all spikes. together. Yeah, they, they were Jeez. all, it is like the, the zoo is coming by. Yeah. And um, could I kill one? No, because I had so many eyeballs on me, I couldn't even get my bow in my hand, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah. um, anyway, uh, that, that's how I got that property. Um, you know, I encourage guys all the time. I see so many of them putting so much time and effort in and they get frustrated. You know, I'm not seeing anything, you know, I'm hunting every day. I'm not seeing anything. I'm bumping into guys and everything else. I say, put that amount of effort in the spring and summer, knocking on doors. As soon as you get that one piece of property, now you can really work it. Now you can do it. You, you're going to see more, you're going to learn more, especially new hunters. I feel like they're going to learn more once they get a piece that they can kind of work themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have the outside influences messing things up for you. Now, um, do you discuss with the landowner, like, hey, I'd like to be the only one if other people approach you here? Well. How does that work? Like, when when this particular piece of property went, when he said, I'm going to allow these two other guys come in, that that did you know, I, I was in a in a weird spot where you know what am I gonna say? Um, the other townspeople don't want me in there, and these two guys wanted to come in, and they had hunted there long before I did the, a butter. And, you know what am I gonna say? Uh, I had to agree with it. Um, I haven't found another scenario where I've had to have those discussions, but fortunately, me and the other two guys we worked it out good. Um, I don't. I think they only maybe hunted two days this year. Yeah, that's one so, of those. Yeah. So it worked out. Yeah. Um, and so what do you mean the other townspeople don't want you there? Have you run into? I the the day I killed in 2015, the day I killed that real good, real good buck out of there. We were dragging him out, and um, we were close to some of the town trails that butt up to this individual's property, mm -hmm. and she saw us. And just some random person on the well, trail. She, she's in town. Yeah. And she saw us. She lives in the neighborhood. And before I get out to my truck, the landowner had called me and said, did you shoot a deer today? I'm like, yeah. And she said, um, so you I saw you, uh, that's her name, and uh, said you guys were hiding. I said, no, we ducked down because, you know, out of sight, out of mind, like I promised. You know, I don't want to bring any attention. Yeah. I didn't know that she saw us. Yeah. I thought, you know, we hid well, whatever. And um, it just so happens um, she was going to call the cops. Um, she didn't know I had permission, and um, my landowner told her, "Yep, yeah, he's fine. You know, he's a good individual." And a friend of mine was working up the up the road, a few houses down from her, and said, "What do you know about this Brian Visco guy?" And he's a real good hunter, uh, Tim Phelan. Uh, he's a scorer for Northeast Big Buck. Uh, Tim has killed hundreds of good whitetail. Anyway, he um, said, "What do you want to know about him?" Well, he's hunting on their property and. I don't really feel safe, and he just up one side of her and down the other. Let me tell you something about this guy. He's nationally ranked. He's a sportsman. He's an outdoorsman, and he just read her the riot act. And she felt a little more at ease after that conversation, but still since then, any town meeting that's come up that my landowner has been there, and she's been there, the topic of me hunting on his property always comes up. In what way? Um, do you still have that gentleman hunting on your property? And does she is she like aggressive and like against she, it still? Last year, she's the one that got the the program shut down. That town program that they had for two years, she got it shut down, mm. and said, "Since you've moved in here, you've ruined this neighborhood." Now, now he gave away hundreds, uh, not hundreds of acres, or approximately a hundred acres to conservation. I mean, yeah. He's done more for that area. Yeah. And she just doesn't want anybody hunting. She, she yeah. just means that he ruined it because he allowed a few people to yeah. hunt the property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, it's just it's crazy. Tough. So, you know, I'm sure she eats meat too. Oh yeah, she's probably a meat eater, and yeah, she goes and down I mean, and I mean, gets to, steak at to, the. Even when I'm coming out, you know, when I'm coming out during daylight hours, if I'm hunting just the morning, I always try and sneak out. Even though I have permission, I always yeah. try and sneak out because. I don't want to have that confrontation. It's such a shame in a way. It, it is. Just is. You know, I just want to be able to go and come as I, as I wish. But it only takes a few people 
to keep calling my landowner before he says, what is my pay value for allowing these guys to hunt? And that's the conversation I had with these other two hunters. It's like, guys, let's be smart. Let's not bring any attention to what we're doing. We're not ashamed of it, but let's not bring any attention to what we're doing. Let's be smart about when we're going in, when we're coming out. Um, you know, if you shoot something, take it out at night. Do not take it out during the day. You know, you, you got to be smart about these things. And we all agreed, you know, and it worked out great. And it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate you have to do that. But if they keep really, that, it, it really is. It is. If they keep badgering him, eventually, and, you know, eventually it's, why, why am I even going through this trouble? Yeah. And I'm going to lose my peace. Yeah. So. Uh, and it's like, that. you know, that so many people use conservation lands. They yeah. use the, even um, state parks and stuff that are open to hunting. Yeah. They're using it all year long. What yeah. if they were just getting shamed every time? Yeah. You know, you rode your mountain bike down yeah. or you you yeah. cross country skiing through this place or yeah. you're just walking your dog. What if we shamed you? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just it really is unfortunate. And you know, dollars And they aren't paying for the oh. the upkeep of this land. It's but hunters. We, but we are. Yeah. And that's you know, that's an argument I don't want to get into either. Like I've I've thought many times of okay, if I do bump into somebody out here, what's my approach? And because it's fragile. If I lose this piece I have two little other pieces. You that, lose your access to this. This piece. Like, I have two others that we shoot anything at. Do, that's like our doe spots. You know, if I really need a fix, I need to shoot something, I'll go to that spot. Um, but this particular spot, you know, I I really don't want to lose it. Yeah. So what do, how do I talk to the individual if I bump into somebody? And I've, I've gone over it so many times in my head. Like, all right, if I see somebody coming out today, what am I going to say? Yes, I have permission and everything else, but how do I do this without getting confrontational, um, without them going to the landowner? And yeah, because yeah. you, you don't care if they call EPOs or anything. No. Everything is perfect. I, I call have, the police. Go ahead, yeah. but don't. I have a good friend, uh, an EPO that's a good friend of mine. That he I'd had, like to do an interview with an EPO. He is, he so is fantastic. He'd yeah, let's connect after this. Yeah, he's a good guy. I'm going to interview uh, Mass Wildlife. So they came out with an Instagram. Uh, post a message the other day saying they're yeah. going to raise the prices saw that potentially for the first time in 25 years because yeah, they that. haven't yeah. and you know honestly i don't i don't see any issue with that really it's 25 years not raising prices yeah, i get it a dollar isn't the same now right. a little bit but there are a lot of i, I want to get their side of it and bring yeah. up a lot of the commenters on there and yeah. what their issue i mean Every, there's they're they're bringing up the fact that so many people use these lands yeah. besides hunters but hunters are the only ones that are exactly. charged for access exactly. to it yeah it's just like boat ramps with kayaks and power boats yeah kayakers and canoeists don't have to pay registrations and whatnot mm -hmm. the money from our registrations and boat fees and whatnot go for the upkeep of those mm -hmm. ramps. Yeah, I, I didn't know that yeah, yeah. i mean kayaker. we that we could have a, a podcast about that entirely yeah. <laughs> boat ramps and all that yeah yeah we're gonna do a boat ramp podcast yeah coming coming this summer <laughs> yeah that'd be great yeah but um yeah i mean I, I gotta say, I hope, um, you know, when you said you wanted to do this, my thought was I wanted to make sure that I conveyed to a lot of people as a few things. A, thankful for anyone that helped me. B, so lucky with some of the things I've seen out in the woods and whatnot. But to the younger guys or the new hunters and whatnot, don't get stuck in, you know, having to kill something, having to perform for anybody else make sure you keep it fun because when you get to that unfun level it's it kind of sucks yeah you know I, I don't i don't wish that for anybody to be sitting there in their stand like what am i doing you know, yeah like right now sitting here i, I can't ever imagine a time nope. where a, a 130 inch is going to walk by and i'm not going to shoot it yeah, and, but like, if that time comes and that will suck i can't imagine it now i, I know i i, you know? I mean i never in my wildest dreams would have i thought so either you know um i gotta say i do like looking at them a lot more now than i used to um i mean come on you're, tur you're turning me. into the townsperson now well i Can't mean we just, just look at yeah them? <laughs> I, I, I i've had so many of them you know like plenty of other guys bet under your stand and play with each other yeah and everything else and it's it's really neat to uh, to see them in their natural environment now when you get i, I like 
when you get that close to that caliber of an animal, it's kind of a whole different thing. Like, whoa. Like, I, I just had probably the king of the woods within yeah. 20 yards of my stand. Kill him or not, that's, like... That's cool. You, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, they react and do things so much differently than the other ones. Um, yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, listen, it sounds like you're back. It sounds like yeah, you're... Yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> it I sounds gotta, like you've... I mean, honestly, I don't even own a hunting bow right now. I mean, I, I don't. I do not own a hunting bow. I <laughs> borrowed one this year that I, I Frankenstein a bow. Uh, my buddy Jason Van Hillo gave me a riser, and we took limbs and put together some bow, and it's nothing that's ever even been built, and it just shoots <laughs> awesome. And uh, That's pretty cool. Um, I will, uh, you know, it's going to, I never had to, for a long time, I never had to pay for hunting equipment. I'm blessed with yep. all my sponsors and stuff yep. when I was really doing it. Now I look at these bows are expensive. Even owning a pro shop, oh, geez. You, you don't look at it yeah, that way. You haven't way. bought one in a while. I haven't had to buy my own bow for over 20 years. That set up four years ago was 1400 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, they're crazy. Like um, I plan on shooting it for another 10 years. Yeah, too. I don't know what I'll, I really don't know what I'll get. Um I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to go with. Probably a bow tech, but we'll, you know, we'll see. But um, I'm kind of, I'm a little excited to, yeah, geez, I got to get a, I got to get a hunting bow for next year. And um, uh, yeah, we'll just, yeah, we'll see what happens. What, um, before we sign out on this, so sure. what is your relationship like with your landowner? Do you ever have, does he invite you over for dinner? Do you share your no. meat? To, like, no? They don't, um, my first you year. You shoot him texts or you just I do. email or yeah, what? Yeah, email or text every time I'm going in. He wants to know where because they do walk the trails. Their kids will come out from Boston and they'll walk the trails and he wants to know where I'm at so that he isn't. Um, he knows I'm just bow hunting, but still. Um, the first year, I, I actually went in the house, sat down with them and, you know, they just give them a background about me and, I found out his wife was into blacksmithing as a hobby. Hmm, so that year for, cool. for Christmas, I bought her a blacksmith, um, like a hobby book for uh, for doing projects and mm -hmm. stuff. And I dropped them off some meat a few times and what. But they stay. This particular landowner is very, um, they're very wealthy, so they don't want to know. Yeah, they're very standoffish. Yeah, nice people. Yeah, but they don't want to have. Um, you know, uh, they don't want to have coffee every couple of weeks. They're yeah. just not that way. Totally. Um, now, conversely, some of my other landowners, the two other people, we used to bring them all kind of vegetable baskets during the year, uh, drop venison off all the time, everything else, um, help them out in the yard if they need, you know, whatever. Um, and I, if I could add, guys that are going to go out asking for permission, make yourself a portfolio of yourself. Um, something you can hand to a landowner, yeah. telling them about yourself, your occupation, what you do, your goals, you know, uh, write up about your ethics of hunting in the outdoors and everything else, and it'll go a long way. Mm, that's really good. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of times it'll be no, more than not, but again, all you need is that one. Yeah. You get that one, boy. When I got that permission that, that day... I, I, I can't tell you. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I got that email. I was like, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I know I can get them now. I'm in there. Uh, so. It's got to feel so good. I mean, it just reminded me of uh, my buddy Evan Scotland, um, who's been on a podcast and uh, got him his first deer this year in Vermont. He's hooked nice, and he's nice. he's going to be right into bow hunting. He can't wait to get a bow. Oh, actually, he got a bow. He's yeah. been shooting it. He can't wait to bow hunt next year. Yeah. yeah. Um, he and I, years ago, we started looking for ponds and lakes um, in the middle of forests where there's no uh, road access uh -huh. and hiking in and fishing them. But Native either trout. we were carrying canoes and kayak on our shoulders oh, wow. a mile into the woods and it was a crazy workout every time yeah but we would like to go explore these places and find a secret honey hole that boats haven't been on potentially and man is that fun and oh. we find some where you're just hammering bass Beggins. and we found this one place uh in new hampshire um now there was no roads that got up to it except for there was one house on it and a long private driveway that went up to it mm. but 
otherwise it's all just hiking trails to get there. Yeah. Um, and he had said, oh, yeah, you know, my dad and I have fished from the dam here before and caught some good fish. And we were like, let's just let's haul a canoe up there. Yeah. So we did. And, I mean, we were just hammering four pound smallies and this is like a small fantastic it's a pond yeah on the top of a mountain and it was it's a really beautiful just awesome place so we got addicted to carrying that canoe up the hill it's a good time and we were doing that over and over and over again and finally we were like we got to talk to this the guy who owns the house yeah and has the private driveway and just try to get permission just to drive up to the top instead instead of carrying carrying it you know (laughs) And we worked on him for years like you would work on a landowner. Yeah. And uh, years and years. No, no, no. We've had, we in the past, we've given permission to people and they abused it and they leave trash up here and they go out to the island and camp on the island and stuff. And this is my own little private sanctuary. And I get it. by the way, the state wanted to drain this place years ago and I had to pony up my own money. I put $100,000 to fix the dam and wow. keep it, a, you know, they were going to drain it into a swamp because the wow. dam broke and they couldn't fix it. With, they didn't have enough money. Yeah. Yeah. So he had done all this stuff to keep it in this beautiful mountaintop lake all by himself, the only house on it, yeah. you know? So he was protective about it. Yeah. But uh, And it took years and years and finally he started letting us, he, he gave us the, key, you know, the code to the gate. and Oh, that's fantastic. You know, you go up there and we just go up in a canoe. Kill him. And just kill them, and it's yeah. so much fun, man. Oh, yeah. And they're they're great fish, and there's a uh, there's big pickerel in there too, and they're fun to catch every once in a yeah, while. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, we leave them a a, a bottle of whiskey every year. Something. And yep. Check gotta in with take them care of your email. Land. Yeah, and, you got to take care of your landowners. I mean, I know Dan and the podcast he had with you before is talking, getting that relationship going with the landowners and whatnot is that's important, yeah. definitely. And and um. You know, don't hide who you are or whatever, to be honest and whatnot, and just be smart about it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Cool. Well, everybody get out there and enjoy it. Don't let yourself get too caught up on... No, uh definitely don't. Don't. One deer yeah. all the time, and don't Whew. get to that... Try not to get to that point. I know. It. You know? Yeah. Because that is sad. I don't want to get there. I, I I tell you, it was, it was, it was a sad conversation it was through texting because we were both in our stands you know but i really was like i I think i'm done Mm. Uh, and and he's like no you can't he's like you just gotta find a way to get back to it and you know i i guess that big buck kind of sucked me back in but i am i'm gonna i don't want that to just be it like i do have to find a still find another way to, to to find the love for it again you know so yeah and maybe it's just work in progress hunting different spots and changing you know, it that up would a little ha- bit that would help uh, like not I, doing the same thing over and over and i have like i hunt alone i have my my buddy brian murray he's really the only one that i would say i hunt with um jason and brandon and kevin once in a while will slip into one of my stands very very seldom but <clears throat> you know um, I'm most of the time by myself. It's, that isn't as fun either. No, and that's and, one thing about fishing, where you can be with a bunch yeah, of people and have a ton of fun. Yeah, right? and and I want to, you know, I'm, I, I said, you know, I have friends in Maine that have invited me to rifle hunt, a um, couple of friends in New Hampshire. And I'm like, you know, I, I think I might start doing that. What about turkey hunt? Have been, you done that? I've been invited a ton, and <laughs> I've never done it. You'll see that it's, everybody yeah, says that's fun because it's, it's so social. So. Yeah. If you're looking for that, maybe maybe do that this year. I'm try s- try to get out there for a weekend. I'm, I'm smally I'm smally <laughs> hunting. I know man. that. I know that. You know, and I always tell my buddy Scotland, who's a huge fisherman, I told him he's the best fisherman I I know. I mean, yeah. really, it's great. And he's into fly fishing. Um, yeah. You know, but he he's picked up the stick again, and yeah. uh, um, he's back into that too. But he, you know, he will tell me like, oh, it's the best steelhead fishing right now. It's November, and I go, dude, in November I'm hunting. I'm hunting. I, I just can't, I could yeah. never go fishing in November. I I, if there's a free hour, I got to be in the woods, right? right. To, you know, yeah. so I get it. I mean, <laughs> I, I was there, and there have been, <clears throat> I mean, many times um, that I'd be on the boat, and I'm like I can't believe I'm actually out here fishing instead of instead of hunting, and all my buddies are in stands. Yeah, like, what are you doing? Yeah, and I'm like well, because you can good. you can fish all year. Yeah. I know it's not as great sometimes, right. but but for me. You know, it'd be like the end of October. I'm like, no, my area's not ready yet. I'm going to keep fishing. Like, yep. You're crazy. I'm like, yeah. do what you want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but. Uh, That's why I think a fishing hunting camp duel 
would oh, be yeah. fucking fun. Oh, yeah. Imagine, yeah. like, you get in the perfect spot. Oh, yeah. I was telling you about my dad's spot in, uh, yeah. in Champlain. It's great for bass fishing. And uh, there's a, a big people. swamp behind his hat, like 200 acres, and everybody yeah. is kind of against hunting on the road, but the landowner who owns most of the swamp, yeah. you might get access in yeah. there. It'd be a great spot. To... Not a ton of big deer up there. Like, I almost moved up there last fall, and I actually I may be moving up there late spring this year. Um, yeah, there aren't a ton, but... No. But not big size. Yeah. But, but there are, like, where... Um, oh, big bodies, but not big, yeah. you know... Quantity. They got big bodies, but yeah. their racks aren't so super huge, but... Yeah, yeah. There's some big swamps up there you can... Right. They, they're, they're growing in. Right. But, all right, man, that was awesome. Okay. We'll uh, end this one. Awesome. Thanks again. All right, glad to do it. Thanks for listening to the Hunt Suburbia podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. We're going to release an episode every single Sunday throughout the season, throughout the entire year, and we will possibly be releasing some bonus episodes here and there um, throughout the week as people you know, come in freshly off a bow kill and tell their stories. We hope that happens throughout the season. Um, there might be weeks where you get two or three bonus episodes. You might not get one for a couple of weeks, but there will be some bonus episodes, but you can count on us every single Sunday to have uh, a new interview on throughout the season. Uh, once again, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. Big bucks I've been dreaming often Every night till I'm in a coffin Vermont woods to the burbs of Boston I'm looking for a tree to get lost in Chris Warner's little dust in the snow Quality time, just me and my bow Fall evenings, I know just where to go For some quality times for me and my bow It's just me and my